This is Autodesk 3D Studio Max. This is the 2013 version, but 10 years ago or more, I was using, I think it was 3D Studio Max 3.1. I used it to render the various different objects for Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Now you can see I've got a car here, it's called the Arrow X car. And what I would do, I would use the animation timeline to put in all the various different angles for the car to be rendered out as. Now, for a full set of angles, I think it was 828 different angles. A maximum potential would be 828, and often you'd have a front car and a rear car, so that would be times two, and then they would have to put separate renders for all the people in there, and some of the cars, I think there would be one or two, which had up to three different sets of people. So you've got the car itself, plus the people, so I think that's times four, so times four. That would be a grand total of 6,624 different angles to make up one car. Let's get rid of this. Now, once I'd rendered out all the different angles, I would take them into a folder with a particular structure, and here it is, I'd call it bulk render, and pre, that would be the initial ones. There's all the various different angles, which I rendered out, all 828 of them. Then I'd take the whole thing into Photoshop. I think it was version 5.5 or 6. Anyway, let's go into Photoshop now. Okay, the next part of the process, come into Photoshop, file open, and bulk render pre. There we go, there's all the files. I'll just call it, say, the first few, and there they all were. Then I create a new file, and we'll take this to pixels 1024 by 768. That was the old format we used to use. There you go. Then you'd have to come through, select this, copy, and then paste it, place it, get rid of the original file, come to the next one, copy it, paste it, come through to the next one, lay them all out side by side, and eventually you end up with a whole load of images all next to each other, spread over seven or eight files, however many, 828 images for one car, then you've got the passengers, then you've got this, then you've got that. It was a nightmare. There was no skill involved with it. You could possibly train a monkey to do this. I'm, I'm not sure about that. You'd have to speak to the people who did the Mercury Space Program for that. Now, Chris, being the absolute gentleman that he is, he would take these files and he would put them all into a regular grid space so that he could actually put them into the game so that the game coordinates would always be the same. And if you come in very close, you can see there was a little reference point there and would have to place the reference point in the right place. Now, inevitably, if it was done by hand, there'd be mistakes made. You wouldn't really notice it until you got into the game where there'd be a slight juddering where maybe I'd repeated one file. It was understandable because after doing thousands of them, inevitably, you would get a few mistakes. This was an awful way of working, but there was a much better way of doing it. It was a combination of using actions, droplets, and something called Contact Sheet 2. We'll take a look at that now. All right, this is my file structure. I've got a folder called Bulk Render. Inside that, I've got three folders. Pre, that's where all my rendered files are ready to be processed. Then I've got this one, Cropped, that's where they're gonna to go to. And Composite, that's where I'm gonna store the final files before I do more stuff with them in another program. All right, calling up Photoshop. First thing I need to do, go to File, Open, and I want to come to and zoom in on it so I can see what I'm doing. Next thing, I need to define an action in which I crop this down to the size I want it to. So I'll come to my Actions palette, come to my Drippy Cat folder, and I'm going to create a new action. I'm going to call this Crop 101, and I'll press Record. Then I'm going to come to my Crop tool. It's already set to one-to-one -one square. That's great, because I want the square file format. I'm going to take this down, look at the top left corner, I'm going, to down, I'm going to bring it down so it says 101 pixels, and I'm going to center it on the car. So the car is in the middle of the picture. And press Enter. That's all I need to do for the Actions file. Next thing, I'm going to close this file. 
I'm not going to save it. I don't want a file in that folder which is a different size to all the rest. It could lead to some problems later on. So, no, don't save. Next thing, I need to define my droplet. So, file, automate, create droplet. Right, now where am I? Let's see, set, drippy cat. Okay, that refers to my actions folder there. So there, drippy cat. And my action, well, yeah, I've got that. Crop 101, that's what I want. I'm going to find somewhere to store my droplet. I'm going to put it just here into this folder. And I'm going to call the droplet crop 101. I click on save. OK, there it is. OK, let's go through this. Override action open commands. Well, there's no open command in that action, so forget that. Include all subfolders. There's no subfolders there. I've got a feeling that will make my life difficult. No, I don't want to do that. Suppress file open options dialogs. OK, all this, I don't need any of that. Now, destination. Where are my new files going to go to? So come to computer. Bulk render, I want them to go to the cropped folder. So there it is, that's all there. OK, override action save as commands. Well, there's no save as commands in there, so we don't need to check that either. So file naming. Well, in this particular thing, you've got options here, but I just want the original document name, the extension. Well, these are BMP files. That's the file format I used to use. I'd probably use PNG these days, but OK. I can just leave that as it is and press OK. And if I come back, look, there's my little droplet. That's the one I just created. Now, if you remember, all my files are in the pre folder. All of those need to be cropped. So click, drag it on top of crop 101, the droplet, let go and look at that. I want to see how long this is going to take. I'll get back to you when this is all finished. Ah, a blank screen because it's all done. I timed that. That took just under four minutes to do. Do you know how long that would have taken me to do if I'd done it the old fashioned way of cut and paste? Now let's check that we've got. There you go. In our crop folder, there's all the files. All the way down. Yeah, they're all there. That's great news. Well, that's the power of droplets for you. You define your droplet. Just drag your folder where you want it to go, and that's your workflow speeded up hugely. OK, the next video is going to be all about how I took those crop files and collated them all into much less files, and made my job and Chris's job so much easier. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes Store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.